Hello, this is April 15th, Wednesday. I hope and pray that you and your family are doing well. I hope that you all had a great Easter, even though it was different. I'm thankful we could still worship together through live stream or Facebook Live. And so grateful you've been coming to worship with us on Wednesday nights. I've been trying to share with you some helpful words, words of encouragement to help you weather this storm we've been going through, the coronavirus, to help you through the difficult time of quarantine and, and being stuck at home. But I pray tonight that God would speak to you in a special way. I think the greatest thing I could speak to you about tonight is your relationship with Jesus Christ. A lot of people through these last few weeks have been contacting me uh, wanting to know how to share their faith or a friend or a neighbor that has wanted to receive Christ and didn't know exactly how to pray with them or what to pray. And, and I've had some other folks that have sent emails wanting to be sure that their family uh, knew the Lord uh, during this crisis, don't know when the Lord's going to return, asking could this be the end, and wanting to be sure of their salvation in Christ. And I'm so thankful that some folks have prayed to receive Christ. I've had the privilege of praying with the gentleman, and I'm so grateful that another family uh, prayed around their dinner table holding hands on Good Friday evening, and they received Christ. And I'm thankful that I was contacted Sunday afternoon by one of our members that shared that a, a friend of her sister's prayed to receive Christ uh, during our Easter service on Sunday. And, and then one of our staff shared about a family member accepting Christ over these last few days. So we again have been praying for revival and spiritual awakening. And I'm so thankful that people are coming to know Christ, even during this crisis, during this pandemic. And and I pray tonight that God would, again, speak to your heart. And, and maybe you're asking a question uh, that a man asked me, I don't know, a year or so ago. He said, Todd, how do you know if you are saved? How, how do you know if you have a relationship with the Lord? And I want to share with you tonight um, how I often explain to people the plan of salvation and why we need Jesus Christ. I pray if you don't know him, that you might know him by the end of this time together. Or, or maybe you've got a family member or a friend that you want to share uh, with them the, the message of Christ after this service. But I always like to begin in Genesis, um, like that song from The Sound of Music. Let's start at the very beginning. It's a very good place to start. Remember, God created this beautiful paradise in the Garden of Eden, and he placed the first man, Adam, and the first woman, Eve, in this beautiful garden. He said in chapter 2 of Genesis, you can eat of anything in this garden except for the tree that is in the middle. It's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And he said, if you eat of it, you will surely die. And I often tell people, God created us to have this closer relationship with him but you remember in genesis chapter 3 the devil came in the form of a of a serpent a snake i know that's hard for us to fully understand but the devil came and he tempted adam and eve to eat that forbidden fruit and do you remember what happened they ate that fruit and at that time the relationship with god was broken until that time, this is how close they were. But when they ate that forbidden fruit, the relationship was broken. And that's when sin entered into the world. That's when sickness and pain, that's when death entered into the world. And all throughout God's word, we saw prophets trying to preach to people, getting them to turn away from their wicked ways or their idol worship or their false god worship and tried to get them to come back 
to the one true God. And we see that all through the Old Testament. And then we see in the New Testament how God sent His Son Jesus into the world in the form of a tiny baby. We celebrate Christmas when Jesus was born to Mary and Joseph. And Jesus would grow in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. And then at age 30, he would begin his earthly ministry of teaching and preaching and healing people. And then at age 33, Jesus would go to that old rugged cross, that Roman type of crucifixion on the cross. And there he would die for you and for me. And when Jesus died on the cross, it made a bridge over that gap so that we could walk over the cross through Christ and have the relationship with God the way he intended from the very beginning. But I often like to share with people, and some have called it the Roman road, several passages out of Romans and some other scriptures. But Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We know that when Adam and Eve disobeyed God and sin entered in, we too now have a sinful nature. We are born with a sinful nature. Maybe you're bent toward one sin and, and I'm bent toward another and this person bent toward another sin. Maybe my sin is not your struggle or your sin is not my struggle, but the Bible says for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We read on in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, For the wages of sin is death. When we disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve disobeyed God and sin entered in, so did death. The wages of sin is death. But the rest of that verse says, But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we know that through Christ, we can have eternal life. It's a, it's a free gift. It's, it's nothing we can earn. We can't be good enough to earn his mercy and his grace. Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, for it is by grace that you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. So we know it's only through God's mercy and grace and through our faith and trust in Him that we can have eternal life. Jesus said in John 14, verse 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So we know it's through Jesus Christ that we can have eternal life, that we can be saved. And then Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says that if we confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. We must believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross to be the payment, to be the ransom for our sin. Again, we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And because we're not able, capable to save ourselves, we place our faith and trust in Jesus. And in that verse, we share often John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever would believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting or eternal life. So we know it's through Christ that we must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe that not only did Jesus die on the cross, but that he was raised from the grave. That's why we just celebrated Easter, the empty tomb to show that through Christ, we have defeated sin and we have ultimately defeated death through what Jesus Christ did on the cross and through the resurrection. We have power through Christ and through His Spirit to have the hope of eternal life. 
And then Romans chapter 10, verse 13 says that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now the question some of you that have contacted me have asked is how can we be saved? How do we need to pray? What do we need to pray? And if you're worried about your salvation tonight and, and you're wondering, am, am I saved? Have I ever given my life fully surrendered to Christ? I'm going to pray with you in just a moment a prayer that, that we call the sinner's prayer. I know in my own life, I prayed and asked Jesus Christ to come into my heart at age 12. And my, my mother and dad prayed with my brother Tim and me as we received Christ. And there's no such prayer in Scripture where it says, this is the sinner's prayer, pray this prayer. But we know there are passages that help us to know that we need to confess our sin. First John chapter 1, uh, verse 9 says that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us or purify us from all unrighteousness. Maybe you prayed a prayer at Vacation Bible School or maybe at a revival or maybe at the end of a service or maybe we prayed together, but it's just a start to get you, uh, again, started in your faith journey with Christ. Certainly, there's a lot more to it. We must repent from our sin, our old ways. We must begin to follow Christ and to live according to His Word. The way that we show the Lord we love Him is by obeying His Word. And so tonight, I want you to be sure, I want you to be ready. We don't know when this craziness is going to end. We don't know when Jesus Christ is going to return. No one knows the day or the hour, but we are to be prepared. We are to be, be ready. And I guess there's nothing greater I could share with you tonight that I want you and your family to be saved. And I can't save you. That only comes through the love of God and through the love of Jesus Christ. But I wouldn't want any of you to die without the certainty of knowing that you're going to be in heaven one day so we can all be together. And I know many of us have loved ones who have gone on, who knew Christ as their Lord and Savior. And, and we're going to get to see them again one day and what a day that will be. But in the meantime, Sunday in the Easter sermon, we were talking about what really matters, what's most important what's the essence of what we should know from god's word and, and i believe the most important thing is this that we would know jesus christ personally as our lord and savior and that we would begin a personal love relationship with jesus christ i wouldn't want anyone to die without the hope of knowing jesus christ and so we through the years have come up with the prayer and it doesn't have to be exactly what I pray with you, but it's a, a prayer where we confess our sin and, and we place our trust in Christ and we invite him into our hearts and our lives. And again, this is just the beginning of living a long life for Christ. We don't just pray this prayer and go back to living like we always lived and treating people the, all, the way we always treated them and, and being a, a person that does not glorify God, there must be real change. And once we invite Christ into our hearts, it says that the Holy Spirit comes inside of us and, and He gives us the power to make these changes and He gives us the strength to be a different person. And just when my friend said, well, how do you know if you're saved? Well, I believe you do feel a peace. You don't have a restlessness or, a, or an emptiness and you keep searching for something like we talked about last Sunday to fill that void because that God-shaped hole has been filled with Jesus Christ and His love. 
I believe also you know you are saved when you begin to see the fruits of the Spirit evident. And that's found in Galatians chapter 5, 22 and 23. And, but the fruit of the Spirit, and you can say them with me, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those fruit must continue to develop and to grow so that we can let the world know that we are Christians and these fruits are evident. And I believe we uh, will be known by our fruit, Jesus shared, that we bear. And I pray tonight that you would have a peace that passes all understanding, that comes from faith in Christ, and that these fruits of the Spirit would continue to grow in your life and in mine. And so I would like tonight to, to pray, first of all, a prayer with you. If, if you've never given your heart and life to Jesus Christ, you can pray with me tonight. And maybe you want to do like my friend did with his family. He and his family joined hands around their table and they, they prayed to receive Christ. And, and this is just the beginning again. We, we also believe in, in baptism and and I'm going to talk to you more about baptism next time, but um, this is the first step in giving your heart and life to Jesus Christ. And, and I pray that tonight you might receive him. And I'm going to pray a simple prayer with you again. It doesn't have to be just like this. It can be in your own words, but this is just a prayer that I've prayed with many of you through the years, and this will get you started on your faith journey. And no matter what tomorrow holds, you can be secure to know that, hey, I've confessed my sin, I've given my life to Jesus, and I know I'm gonna be okay, we're gonna be okay when we know Christ. And I just encourage you, this is the greatest decision you can ever make in your entire life. Because everything else, I always said the three biggest decisions at least in my opinion, we ever make is when we decide to give our hearts and lives to Jesus Christ, fully surrendered, because it's the only decision that lasts for eternity. Everything else is temporary, but this is eternal. The second thing I've shared is the biggest decision is when you um, get married, when, you, when God brings you that special someone and you decide to commit your life uh, to spend in your life with someone. And then thirdly, maybe is what we choose to do with our lives, our career. And no matter what our career, we can use it as a platform to share our faith with others. And God uses all of us in our area of influence. But I'm going to pray with you right now. And if you've never received Christ as your Lord and Savior, I pray this would be the time. If there was ever a time to give your life to Christ. I pray that it would be right now and that you would begin. And when this pandemic is over and when, when this coronavirus is over, that you won't fall back into the same old habits, doing the same old things, but again, that you would repent. And when you repent, it's a change of heart, change of mind, change of direction, you used to live this way, but now you're walking in newness of life. And Paul said again in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. I pray that this would be a new beginning for you and your family. At this time, I would love to pray with you this prayer again this simple prayer that we call the sinner's prayer and and you can pray it in your own words but if you would like to repeat this prayer after me and and begin your spiritual journey with the lord uh, we would love that so much so if you would just bow your heads and close your eyes as we pray together dear god i confess that i'm a sinner lord jesus Please forgive me of all my sins. I believe, Jesus, you died on the cross to save me from my sins. 
I ask you, Lord, to come into my heart. Thank you, God, for saving me. I love you, Jesus. Now let me pray. God, I just pray right now that if someone or many people prayed that simple but heartfelt prayer, that they would just begin, Father, walking in newness of life, that the angels are singing and rejoicing and celebrating in heaven over this one sinner who has repented and given their life to you. I pray, God, that you would grow them in your likeness. Father, that you would grow the fruits of the Spirit, that your Holy Spirit, God, would guide them and direct them. And, and Father, teach them your truths and, and help us, God, as a church family, to know how to love them and and to help them to grow in their faith and to disciple them as we all grow together. But God, we just thank you tonight. We glorify you tonight over these names that have now been written in the book of life and will have the hope of eternal life through Jesus Christ. We praise you and we thank you in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. I pray tonight that if you ask Christ to come into your heart as your Lord and Savior, that you would share that with your spouse, or, or if you're a young person, you share it with your parents, or if you're a single person, you would share it with a friend. But I would love to know if you want to send us an email, or if you want to contact me, or send a message uh, to Jessica through our church Facebook so we can pray for you. And then when all of this craziness is over, I would be honored to baptize you with believer's baptism. And again, I want to talk to you more about why we baptize next week, but I pray that many of you received Christ tonight and that you would uh, have this wonderful peace in your heart and in your soul but every Wednesday, we also have a time of prayer. I know we have many prayer requests that have still been going out over our prayer chain, and we want to remember those folks that are hurting, those people that are battling sickness, folks that are going through radiation or chemotherapy treatments even during this season. We want to remember families that are grieving over the loss of loved ones, Again, we want to pray for all of those um, first responders and for our president and for our governor and for all of our leaders and medical professionals. And again, we're praying for our church family. I miss you all so much and our staff, we miss you. And I'm thankful we can stay connected uh, through uh, electronic devices or through, again, live stream or Facebook or YouTube. I'm grateful for all the ways we are staying connected, but I miss seeing you all and can't wait until we can be back together. And And uh, we love you so much. And I know God loves you so much. And tonight I would like to just have a time of prayer. And then after I pray, I'm grateful that one of our members uh, made a recording that's a, a beautiful song that that we used to sing years ago. One I know that uh, my family used to sing. It's it's Rise Again, and I'm grateful that Bill McAlpin sent in this recording that I pray that it would minister to your heart tonight and, and that you would understand the hope that we have through our risen Lord. But let's pray together at this time. God, again, we love you so much, and I'm grateful tonight, Lord, for folks that have received Christ or, or maybe some that are going to receive you, Lord, and I pray that they would just open up their heart to you and, and they would come to know you, uh, Father, with this uncertain time that we're living in, that we can be sure of our salvation and be sure of our eternal life and God, we know you can use times like coronavirus uh, for your good and for, for our good and for your glory that revival and spiritual awakening can come even during this 
difficult time. And Lord, we're seeing signs of that. And we're praising you for many more victories that you're going to bring. And Father, I just pray tonight that you would continue to bless all of our families and individuals that are watching. I pray, Lord, that they're staying healthy and safe. And Lord, that we're having quality family time and and we're growing in our relationships with our spouses or with our children or or with a brother or sister or family member and father even through uh phone calls or text messages or or maybe it's facetime the lord that we're still growing in our relationship with one another and father i just pray continued prayers for our president and our corona virus task force and our governor and father these these folks are doing their very best to encourage us to keep us safe to help us and lord bless them and again be with all of our medical professionals and doctors and nurses and father all of those that are uh, firemen or paramedics or or emts father keep them all safe our police officers continue to bless our military and father even folks in grocery stores or in places of business that still have contact with people and lord i just pray for a hedge of protection to be around each one and around our church and around each family lord that there would not be any more sickness but we just pray in the strong name of jesus that with your stripes with your wounds we are healed in every way and that this virus would come to a close and father i just pray again that soon we'll be able to come back together again and and that we would be able to fill this church all the churches would be filled lord with people hungering and thirsting after you and and Lord, that we'll have to set up chairs because there'll be so many people wanting to come into your house and to make their professions of faith public and desiring baptism. And Lord, that we'll just uh, rejoice and we'll just raise the roof with the praise and thanksgiving for what you're going to do. But God, until that time, keep our faith strong keep our love for you strong and our love for one another and and may we just live lives that are holy and pleasing and glorifying to you we love you so much lord and we thank you for your faithfulness we thank you for your salvation through jesus christ we thank you for the hope we have through our risen lord and Father, we know because of what Jesus did, we too one day will rise again to be with you in glory, just like your son Jesus did. And we thank you and glorify you for that in the strong and holy name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Again, thank you so much for watching tonight. And thank you for allowing us to be a part of your uh, new normal and your routine and and i appreciate again bill mccalpin for leading us now in this beautiful song thank you again and god bless you go ahead drive the nails in my hand laugh at me where you stand